Hello, welcome to the DNN Connect conference. Uh, this session is to deal with how to create a plugin for Open Store e commerce system. My name is David Lee, I'm an associate at Nevo Web, who are the lead developers of the Open Store e commerce system. Before we go any further, I would just like to say thank you to all of our sponsors this year. Uh, without these people, we wouldn't be able to, or these companies, we wouldn't be able to put on this event. As for what we'll be covering in this session, uh, I'll just give you a quick outline of the ideas. It's to look at Open Store website and see what Open Store actually is. Look at the manuals, the development documents that we have created in GitHub, the GitHub source, the GitHub Visual Studio documents. SQL architecture, the Embright info class, open store plugin interface, and we'll try and spell that right next time, and building a payment provider. So okay, to start, I'll quickly show you the open store e-commerce website. This is uh, a new evolution. We, to those of you that know DNM before, uh, open Store used to be called as uh, have a name called MB Store. We've decided to rebrand it for version four and create a new uh, website and new documentation to try and help people understand how it works and uh, what it can actually do for you. So on their website, there's it's just a basic website which is the standard that you can obviously get and there's a there's a demo link a download link uh, features which will give you a list of all the features that open store contains uh, resources the resources link to the github the documentation forums and manager manual and also on here we're putting in the plugins that are available for free open source we have a number of showcases just to highlight what the store can do and a list of agencies who are competent in dealing with uh, open store if you want your company to be listed here please get in touch with me and we'll uh, we'll arrange something so that we can list everybody just a quick demo now of what open store is and how it works uh, this is obviously missing missing something there we'll have to check what that is but we have a demo which basically gives us a product list um, and product detail options allows us to add to the basket if we return and click that return we have an Ajax product list, so we can filter the the product list based on Ajax filters and Ajax categories. And obviously, we we have a a panier. Obviously, I'm going into French here, which is a basket uh, that goes through the through to the bank and pays. So, open source, uh, open store is available on GitHub under open store hyphen e-commerce slash open store and all the code for creating the store and developing the store is listed is listed here. On the documentation we have some documentations based on integration. So on the integration guide we have a lot of different information about how to set set up the um, the store and what options are available in there so one of the most important being pages and modules which will need to be know about in order to actually build the store from from scratch on a dnn install there is also something that we'll come back to a bit more which is the developer guide this is basically a series of um, documents that explain how to develop plugins and other developments in Open Store. So we'll we also 
let me let me first of all say we've just got we have a forum as well which is forum.openstore-e-commerce so any questions that you need answering you can place on the forum and we will try and get an answer back to you um, there is also a manager manual so this is what we give to our clients which basically gives, gives all the operations of the back office that the manager can deal with themselves uh, unfortunately at the moment it, we have it in French fine we have it in English in French so we need we are in the process of translating this so hopefully in the next couple of weeks we'll have this done and there are ideas to and people volunteering to translate this into Dutch and Spanish and other languages so hopefully we'll get a complete manual that we can pass to any of our clients in different languages now going back to the development guide we have some setup documents when we look at them they're they're all on github and there's some information on how to actually set up your development environment there's also the SQL architecture documents which although aren't necessary to to read in order to understand how to create a plugin it's advisable that you spend some time and read this document so that you understand the database structure that OpenStore uses. Uh, it, use, just, it uses SQL Server but it uses SQL Server in a way that's new. It uses, it as, uses SQL Server as a NoSQL database so in effect we have one table that creates uh, all the data or saves all the data for for the store uh, the data access document this just covers how we use um, data access in um, open store we have a template system which is also a data data access system which uses a single class called Mbright info which matches the class in the database from this we can basically get all the data and process the data as well it's quite a heavy class but it's got some great features in order to get back data from the XML data format so that you don't have to delve too far into XML and what it's doing it basically deals with a lot of the day-to-day -day processing that you will need when you're creating a plugin. <coughs> there's some there's a, it, it's also possible to create customizable fields and this document just explains how to add custom fields onto products and categories. Uh, localization this this is a small document based on explaining localization because although there is only one language usually in DNN we always really need the minimum of two languages one for the UI interface one for the edit uh, language the, of the data you know the edit language of the data that we're um, manipulating so this this document just quickly explains how we deal with with that problem now we come on to the actual plugins now now there's what, one two three four types of plugins yeah now the most simple is just a simple plugin that is basically a DLL uh, in this you it, you can call one method from it and it will process some data so rather than doing direct data access on the database to update some um, records or to fix some problem data issues or or any kind of one-off fix or update you can use this plugin to actually create a program in C sharp or VB in order to finish uh, or fix the problems that you have so the idea is that we have this this um, document explains getting hold of a Visual Studio template, creating a project, and explains how to run the project in OpenStore. 
So I'm not going to go into this that much, but it, it's worth a read because it's very handy to know that you can actually have a one-off program that can run and it's integrated into open store so that you don't have to create a separate module or a separate program in DNN you can just simply use this interface or this uh, Visual Studio template to create a very simple plugin that you can run and can update the, the database or the system with in any way next we have the single interface plugin now the single interface plugin is probably what it what it sounds like it's the way to actually create a plugin that in the back office has a single page so for example this is my local development uh, my local development um, area for MB store or open store got to stop saying MB store open store um, what I'll do I'll quickly log in and I'll go to the back office It'll give me a minute it's turning right in the back office we have open store admin so if we go into the back office the uh, you you basically get a, a dashboard when you first want to run in I mean this is my development uh, PC that's running here so there's a lot of things a lot of admin plugins but the basic simple template interface is if you go into open store payment for instance you get a single page with data fields you fill in the data fields and then you can actually use interfaces to interact with open store uh, to basically have the plugin interact and work with events that happen during processing so that's that's a single interface one um, if we go to a list and detail plugin this is exactly the same kind of thing in the back office you can have a list of things in this case I'm just going to just quickly show you the pro products and you can see you've got a list of products and when you edit the product you'll get just waiting for the razor to compile for the first time in so you'll get a list of detail and here you can change all the details so you can you can actually create your own kind of plugin that is a list in detail um, so these these two things here are our basic kind of structures that you can use to create um, a plugins for open store and if you look at the uh, in the documents we can see single interface it'll ask you to do things or it'll explain how to do things to, to start up Visual Studio use the template replace certain names that have been used in the template to create your new plugin and rename some of the files and how to add it to the open store back office so it's it's pretty simple as you can see this is quite a fairly quick trick of events so the one that everybody asks me about always is how do we create a payment provider so I'm going to quickly show you how to get a base provider using the Visual Studio templates so as you can see here this this explains where to get the Visual Studio template from uh, and once you, um, once you've created once you've downloaded it you put it onto your machine and obviously you can create a new project using the template so if I, I've got a version of Visual Studio here so I'll quickly start up a new project and then we can take it from there so new project I've already downloaded the uh, the actual release data onto here or the, the actual Visual Studio template should I say 
and uh, it's OS payment gateway. It's the one with the thing. I've got an old, another one there. So I'll call this one new test. New test. So we have. So we have a name for it. When we browse, we want to make sure we put it into our development area, which is part of this massive mess of test programs. Where are we? There. There we go. So, and install the uh, desktop modules, Embright. And that's where we want to cre create it, so we'll select Embright. Obviously, if you've got your own company name, it would be far better to put it under your own company name. There's no requirement to put it under Embright, although you might have to rename a few a few things, so just, just be aware of that. So make sure that this is the create new directory for solution is not checked because for some reason if you do check that it creates two directories underneath I'm sure there's some logic there but it found it escapes me what the logic is really so when we create this we'll see now that we have give it some chance we'll have a project that is based on the template now what the first thing we need to do is rename OS Payment Gateway with the new name of the of the uh, payment provider. In this case, we're going to make sure that it's lowercase, and it says, you know, make sure it's lowercase and keep the late the case uh, sensitivity when you're actually doing the replace in this in this situation. We want to make sure that we don't replace everything just the things that match in lowercase so this is this is our project that's been loaded so we'll do a replacing files uh, let me bring that onto the thing yeah so we now have plug in I don't think it was that replace with we've got OS hyphen new test new test and remember we have to put in an underscore there and we have to match the test and here we put in OS underscore payment gateway underscore let me just check so we've got OS payment gateway underscore I'll just check that against the document OS payment gateway underscore yep so we're doing this first operation of replacing this, matching the case to make sure we get lower case, case and replace all. And I think my machine's going into some weird thing where the uh, virus checkers go through my disk. I can hear it whirling, so it's a bit slow. So these have been replaced with lower case. Yeah, now we're going to turn this on. We need to also replace. Well, I'm going to go the OS payment gateway with the new name. Yeah, and this is our in uppercase. Yeah, so it's OS payment gateway. We we'll get rid of the end, and we need to match this OS. New, I'm going to use this capital there, new test. I'll just check before I do that. So we have, where are we? OS payment gateway uh, with a new one and we'll turn off match case. So let's do that turn off match case, replace all. There's a few more changes this time. trying to deafen me with the bing as well uh, so we'll save everything there so that should be the two changes that we've got I'll just close all these documents now one thing we have got here is this section here which is it says to check that the control node in the plugin XML file is in lowercase 
Now, this might be okay, but under install we have plugin OS payment gateway, and it needs this in this section here in lowercase. And it's standard that we just make it lowercase, really. If you save it from the back office, it'll always make it lowercase, but in the uh, in the Visual Studio template, it's it replaces it, and uh, we don't always get lowercase there, so we just need to make sure that's lowercase. Yeah, then we get to renaming it. So we want to rename some of the files that exist in there. So we've got obviously OS Payment Gateway. We need to make sure that these are renamed to the new name. So let's. Well, we, we know the new name is OS Test. So I'll just copy that. And the plugin, let's make it OS Test. Um, on the DNN manifesto, uh, there was something else, I'm pretty sure. Was it themes, config, and this is an important one to make sure we get right because we're obviously going to be calling this from the code. So let's change them. What one, two, three, and then the name of the the name of it's already okay when we created it. So that's all the files that we've changed now. At this point, we should be able to compile. Yeah. Now, let's try that. Rebuild. Cross your fingers. Hopefully, it works. Right. So yes. And oh no, we're still waiting. It's a bit slow today, my machine. Yes. So we've got. We've now got a payment provider outline or base program that compiles so what we need to do is make sure that it is uh, existing in the bin folder of DNN so that we can see it in the back office going back to this document here we need to rename the JS file in settings.cms it needs to match the file name so, I mean, that's to do with the PayPal one. So this is obviously something we need to do. Let's look at the settings. So under default, settings, CMS, we have here, desktop modules, Embrite, Embrite new test. This, this, is, this is what we're talking about here. And it's already been converted from when we went through renaming things. So it's, it's basically picking up this, this JS here. So we've renamed the GS, so that, that deals with it. So that, that section's okay. Yeah, they give us an example here, you know, of what it should be. In the settings field, we need to make sure the control is calling the control name. Yeah, and it's hard coded in, so we'll go back. Settings field, control name here, but we want this in lowercase, OS. So that's that is Isles dealing with this section. Now what we what we do have in this is an MS build file. So we can automatically build the documents. Now if we want to activate that, we've got to go into the let me just bring this over here we've got to go into the project file and the way I usually do this is leave Visual Studio open Visual Studio open go into Embrite where is it we've got Embrite new test that's the one I'm doing so pick up the project file edit that with notepad or notepad plus plus in my case um, let me just bring this on to drag this onto the onto the oops that's the wrong one there onto the screen so from here we can see that uh, right at the bottom there's some sections copied out 
so we can uncopy these yeah, and these deal with the paths required for for the build I'm just going to save this because I think we might have to play around with the paths and everything reload solution I'm just going to give it a go rebuild and it and it succeeded now part of the part of the uh, the MS build is to actually go to install we should have yeah part of it is to move the new DLL to where it needs to be in the installation so if we go back to Embright where are we? Embright test now under install there is still nothing now if you make this a release and save it and rebuild just cross our fingers it succeeds but because we now have it active it's actually created the install plugin for us as as a single plugin which we can use to move to um, the live systems uh, I've just showed you that we're not we're not going to do that at the moment we just want the details in there what I'm going to do is this next section on it gives you some information on the actual gateways and how they work you know this is a basic standard one it's payment on the website goes to payment on the bank they usually send an IPN automatic no notification back to the website and then they send the client back so this is just giving you a little bit of background about the standard design of linking to a bank and coming back there's some other information here on updating things and gateway templates and how how it actually how it actually works now nah, so it's I'm not going to go in too much into that at the moment but the one thing that we do want to do and I notice it's not on this document so I'll, I'll have to add that is getting the getting the information getting the um, payment provider to appear in the the list of plugins now so here we can see it's, it's not in the list of plugins so the way we can do this is go into extensions I've got a bit few too many on this we'll get there in a minute eventually it's just reloading the app because we've recompiled and what I want to do is in order to get the the plugin recognized in the open store back office and by open store we need to take this plugin XML we can copy that and we can move it to Embright by plugins if we place it in there when we go into our store and look at plugins what it does it looks if there's anything in this folder if there is it picks it up and does the link in this in this plugin section so here we can see we've picked up the new plugin test and if we edit the plugin we can see this is information based on the reference which we know we can call now and we can identify it it's based on the information of what ASCX what control is basically going to be called from the back for the back office what security rights we've got if it want it invisible we can turn it there and small small description field if you need you feel the need to fill it in now the important things here are the interfaces now the way that plugins work in open store is you can have different types of interfaces to do different actions and to be processed on different types of events so in this case we want payments this is a payment provider so it makes only sense, sense that we've got a payment yeah a payment provider in there and there's also something called an ajax provider now an ajax provider uses ajax to actually post data back to the system so in order to persist data we use Ajax we take a section of the HTML page we post it to the server using an Ajax call from jQuery 
and once it's on the server we can process it and uh, and persist it to the database and this is this is the action that that allows us to do this the Ajax provider so there's all, also other things other interfaces that we can use interface use, use user interface uh, these these are all in uh, French I've gone in in French let me come out and go in and in, in English I'll just have to scroll down it says it's not come out we've got a bit too many on there we need to look at that when we come out the user interface it's not playing ball with me <laughs> come on <laughs> right there we go we're out so if we go into English the user interface of the back office it picks up whichever language you are in when you go in the back office so if you go in in French it stays in French and you have edit languages here so obviously we've got French and English on there so when you switch you'll get the the fields that are French in French uh, but your user interface will stay English this is the two languages that you that I was talking about earlier that you need so we'll go back into English um, we've got a few too many uh, a few too many options on this to actually uh, see see the thing. Let me. Uh, what I'm going to do is just go into plugins. I'm just going to hide a few of these. I think this is something we need to. Uh, we can hide them by disactivating them. Oh, oh kind of, we've got a hidden. Let's keep it active and we'll hide it. Hide, save, return. Oh. Hide this one as well. We want the ones that are uh, blocking up our menu. I think we obviously need to review this if we're getting this kind of problem where there's too many on the screen. But let's have a look now. We're in a few, and I think it, we need to reset the cache cache and we'll go back in and hopefully now I've removed yes I've removed some so we can see them all okay um, so this is the new payment test so when we go into here we can see this is basically what the Visual Studio program has created it's created a, a template with all, all these things in and we have fields and the idea is these OS setting fields you can add more yourself and uh, make sure you deal with everything and as you can see this persists back to the database so I'm just going to quickly show I mean the settings fields are close all with this document when we look at this we can see let's go down to where those OS test settings so as you can see these these are those two text files for the settings of our test now what we can do is we can put another one in and we can call it just test and we'll just call it test there so effectively you can create once we save that so you can create your own template your own list of set of settings that you need in order to make the system run or your plugin run. So if we refresh that, you can see we now we've now got an extra test field. Yeah. Now, because of the way that it works with the Ajax temp and the templated system, once we've created a field on the template and it's displayed that field will then automatically be pers persisted to the database so we don't do, need to do anything else we don't need to touch the database records yeah and we say we refresh that and as you can see it saved the data so it's saving data based on template changes nothing else so that's that's a massive time saver 
you know you don't have to touch anything in the database to make sure that you save different types of data you, all you need to do is have the fields available on the template that display okay um, the things that you probably need to look at now are under components we've got Ajax provider now if you remember me saying that um, the Ajax provider basically saves the data to the database this is what we're doing here we're basically saving debt de saving the settings so that when we click it throws the data to this method and saves it to the database automatically and when we change the language again we say we're saving the data and re-rendering re with the new language and that this payment provider now this is the interface to the actual real payment provider and the, this is what you really need to look at changing yeah there's some basic things here that will work but it's this section of code with getting return templates processing the payment return uh, redirecting for the payment there's a it's a bit more explained in the document what each things that these do but this is this is the guts of what needs to be changed yeah, there's a utilities, so there's you'll see some utilities in there, and a remote post. The remote post is so that we can just display a waiting or now processing uh, page while we redirect to the uh, to the required bank. Um, we've got certain fields that you know give you the you know this gives you the list of the button when you want to actually go there. You've got fail payment, OK payment. And settings. Um, one thing that is very important is the IPN. Now the IPN is dealt with by the notification uh, AS, uh, ASHX. Yeah. So basically, the IPN. If we go back to if we go back to the thing, I can't do that with the video on. Unfortunately, let me try and. Uh, find it ah, now we're hidden let me go back to Bing I ah, still can't see <laughs> let's go uh, open store github uh, that's ours github so we're in open store github i'll just find the open store e-commerce developer documents um, and it's creating a payment provider single payment payment provider pdf let's have a look at that obviously usually i won't be able to do this but my record i'll be able to flick between the tabs but my recording device is stopping me getting to my tabs so in this as you can see we've got the automatic notification which posts back to the notification now that is the that is effectively this notify ACH so the, the URL to, for the RPN is the URL that points to the notified ACX and once this gets here it processes the request and based on what comes back you need to deal with with the update of the order as as required so that's basically what um, it means to create a um, payment provider for open store uh, I'm going to conclude conclude it at the moment I hope you have a go at trying to do some kind of plugins and different kind of plugins uh, there's still a lot more to it to kind of expand on in open store open store one of the major design ideas about it was to ensure that we could use this as a central core and expand it with all different types of plugins so that we can make open store not just an e-commerce system but a directory system that can be expanded so i'll leave it there thank you for listening and goodbye